when your own fucking running partner ain't in the next room putting you in. We even went to Mickey D's for him because he was so motherfucking helpful. Where are we going? Break room. So you can enjoy that, huh? Alright, but I still ain't saying shit to you, huh? Yeah. Marnell, what the fuck? Marnell, what the fuck? Marnell, what the fuck? The most dangerous character on the wire. Not the feds, not the cops, but the snitch. I let my nuts hang, right? All right. The snitch came in many sizes. Young, old, skinny, fat. It didn't matter. If you talked, you got dealt with one way or another. If there's one thing I could say about David Simons, it's his ass ain't discriminate. He stayed pretty consistent when it came to the snitch. I mean, look at this shit. Season one, episode one. D'Angelo's on trial for murder and Gant takes the stand. He, he's right there. For the record, the witness has identified the defendant, D'Angelo Barksdale. Now the crazy shit is, D'Angelo beat the case. He was good to go. But to set an example, they killed Gant anyway. And this moment right here just set the tone for the entire series. Today, we're going to take a look at some of the snitches on the wire. I am doing a second video about this, y'all. So if I miss one or two, don't kill me in the comment section. But first, like always, you know, hold on a second. Put a pause on that shit. Cut the music off. I got to give a shout out to the big homie Schwartz from a man's world podcast dog for my little wire channel to make it on your radar and then for you to show love and not only comment, but shout me out in your next video. Holy shit, bro. Thank you so much. And another thing, the shop y'all, if you need some wire content in between mine, go subscribe to the shop. We have to support this wire community and keep the show alive. I got a challenge for you, Schwartz. I know you do your deep dives on the wire content, but I want you to have fun with this shit. I recently did my top seven moments from season one. A Man's World podcast, if you watching, I need you to give me your top five moments from season one. I need to see how my list stacks up against your list. Get in this comment section, hit them up, Tag him, text him, email him. I don't give a fuck what y'all do. But let the man know I need to see his top five moments from season one. But first, like always, big rich in this bitch. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. There's tons more Wire content on the way. And real shit if you've already subscribed. Thanks so much for giving me a chance, y'all. Now let's go. Now let's get the controversial snitch out the way. There's two that come to mind when I think about this shit. And that's Avon Boxdale and Bodie Brody. First off, Avon. Let's keep it a buck here. Let's call a spade a spade. Avon snitched to get out of prison. One year on a seven year bid. We're offering extraordinary cooperation in this matter. Cooperation in this matter. Cooperation in this matter. Mr. Boxdale's placing himself at risk by offering information implicating other prisoners and staff at MCI. Even though Avon orchestrated it, Avon, Stringer, Levy, Butchie, he still had to snitch on the officer to get out of prison. I can't lie, this is probably one of my favorite sequences in The Wire. From start to finish, how they break Avon out of prison. This shit was fucking genius. <laughs> What's up? You're gonna have to search your vehicle, man. Sorry. Search the... What the Open fuck? Open it. Or I'm gonna shim the lock, maybe damage your ride. Fuck this, you got no call to be doing me like this. No call and no damn warrant. I mean, he also had to snitch on Stringer. The brother, right? Am I wrong here? Is Avon Buck still a snitch? <laughs> and the other one is Bodie Brodus. Bodie's the unluckiest motherfucker on this show. The first time a cop helps him out, here's bitch ass monk to see him getting in McNulty's car. But do y'all think Bodie would have went through with this? Me personally, I can't see Bodie taking a stand on the Omar shit. I can't see it. Bodie was a fucking savage. The fuck is up, huh? What y'all doing? Yo, do what you feel, but be ready to finish what you start. I just think he had a moment of weakness. He was torn about his man, Lil' Kevin. I mean, even though it's Lil' Kev's fault, Bodie put the chip in Lil' Kevin's back, in my opinion. Yeah, well, I ain't the one you need to convince. Plymouth, bro. 
But that's two for y'all. Those are the two most controversial snitches on the show, in my opinion. Get in the comment section. Next, we got the confident snitch. Again, there's two that come to mind. Bubbles and Omar. Shit, if it wasn't for Bubs, the cops would have no idea who's who with the Boxdale crew. Bubbles' hat trick is so dope and sneaky at the same damn time. Put out a hat there, mister. Put out, man. Hey, Shorty! Oh, 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 oh. I mean, shit. Outside of the wiretap, Bubbles is probably the second most important person when it comes to building their case. These dudes would have been lost if it wasn't for Bubbles. You know it's a fucked up idea when Johnny don't want no part of it. <laughs> okay, so a, a, a snitch is a snitch, right? There you go. It's a YP one, man. Then you got Omar. In another one of the greatest sequences in television history. I mean, Omar was the only one to get Levy flustered. Not the cops, not the judge, not Rhonda, but fucking Omar. Omar had Levy off his game. That I got the shotgun, you got the briefcase, Talk about fucking bars for days. I got the shotgun. Got the briefcase. It's on the game though, right? But then I sit back and think about this shit. How fucked up of a character can Omar be? Not only will he take your shit, but if you retaliate, he will tell on you. And he was a proud snitch too. He wanted everybody to fucking know it was him. But that swag that Omar carried, oh my god, that shit was in a class all by itself. I mean, I guess that's what you get for torturing this boy. Next, we got the sad snitch. And there's a couple that come to mind. Wallace, Randy, D'Angelo, the Sabakas. But these are the five that stick out the most. I mean, first there's Wallace. To this day, I still haven't forgiven Bodie and Poop for killing my man Wallace. I mean, arguably one of the saddest scenes in television history. Yo, you my, I'm my nigga, yo. You fucking brought this on yourself, man. We you boys. You brought this on yourself. You ain't gotta be like this, yo. I can remember where I was the first time I watched this shit. To this day, this shit still hurts. And what I'm about to say might contradict everything I just said, and it might sound a little fucked up, but Wallace had to go. Stringer was right, Bodie was right. I wish they would have handled it differently. But as fucked up as it sounds, Wallace had to go. I heard he damn near shit his pants when he saw what happened to Omar's bitch. He just ain't built for this, man. Heart pump Kool-Aid. Heart pump Kool-Aid. Oh, yeah! Next, we got Randy. I 1000% blame the fucking teacher for mishandling this shit. Randy would have sold his soul not to go back to that fucking group home. And if this teacher would have just taken one second to listen to the kid and look at him, to see the fear in his eyes. I mean, this shit was so mismanaged. I know about a murder. I do. I blame the teacher first and foremost. Then, of course, dumb, dumb Herc. And Carver should take a little blame here, too. But I tell you this, at least Carver tried. And that pat that Randy gives Carver, that little tap on the hand. It's okay. What? You tried. You don't need to feel bad. Thanks. Oh, that shit broke my heart. That shit was almost just as sad as the whole Wallace situation. I mean, Randy got a raw deal with this shit. Have your foster mother's house burnt down. Then you got someone who's willing to take you in, but the system doesn't allow it. How about, how about if I take him as a foster parent? That shit was like pouring salt on the wound. You got someone right here who's willing to take the kid, but they can't expedite paperwork. They can't move around their rules and regulations. I mean, he's a fucking cop. I mean, how foul is that shit where Naaman can get the okay from his father to live with Bunny, but Randy, who has nobody, not a soul on this planet, and you got Carver right here willing to take this kid in, and the system don't allow it.
Next, we got D'Angelo. Spilled the beans to McNulty, Ronda, Lester, told him exactly what they needed to know. And then was coached by his mother the next day, out of snitching into taking the 20 years. Again, coached by his mother to go to prison for 20 years. This right here is part of the game, D. And without the game, this whole family would be down in the fucking terrace living off scraps. I mean, Weebay still got caught because of D'Angelo's bullshit, but D'Angelo retracted the whole shit. D'Angelo is one of my favorite characters to argue about because, again, it can go either way. Both sides would be right. For a moment or two, collect your thoughts, you know. Get your shit together. And then I think it might be a good thing for you to write a little letter to those children. Then you got Nick and Frank Sabaka, the heart and soul of season two. Nick snitched to get revenge for his Uncle Frank. I mean, Uncle Frank did save his life. Nick wanted to come to this meeting and Frank told him no. That was a good call by Frank. Is it just me or was Nick Sabaka put in the worst protective custody in protective custody history? Fuck you for tearing down the port of Baltimore and selling it to some yuppie asshole from Washington. All right, all right, all right. Fucking season five and here's Nick Sabaka showing up for work. Then you got Frank Sabaka. Now Frank caught a raw deal if you ask me. Any man would do anything for their son. Even a dumb fuck like Ziggy. Ziggy went psycho, ended up in prison, and Frank Sabaka would have done anything to get this boy out of jail. Ziggy could walk, Uncle Frank. And for that, they want what? Loyalty. Especially seeing the condition Ziggy was in. If Frank could have stayed quiet for a few more hours, he'd still be alive and there's a good chance Ziggy's sentence would have got reduced. Your way. It won't work. Now lastly, we got the desperate snitch. And again, there's two that comes to mind. Stringer Bell and Dum Dum Orlando. Let's get Orlando out the way quick. His life went from sugar to shit in the span of two episodes. Do your fucking job. On your first deal, you get pinched by the cops. That's what your ass gets, bro. <laughs> <laughs> You knew the second Orlando was arrested, his ass was on borrowed time. And for Levy to drop a gem on his ass while he's locked up, pour salt on the wound, rub that shit in his face, Levy was a fucking super gangster. Moments like this is what makes Levy so damn legendary. <laughs> you wanted to be in the game, right? Now you're in the game. And we bane little man lit his ass up. Some ain't rhyme. Shit ain't right. No. Signal 13! Signal 13! Not to mention Kima. I mean, Kima was in the car too. But this is all because of snitching ass Orlando. Yeah, let me think on it, alright? Finally get some men's You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And lastly, Again, y'all, I hope y'all still watching. I hope y'all having fun with this. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button. And lastly, we got my favorite character on the show, Stringer Bell. See, where you living, man? Where am I living? Well, if you're thinking of coming downtown, I got some condos about to come on the line in eight months. For Stringer to come to this decision, y'all need to understand his back was against the wall here. Can we all be real about something? Avon was about to burn this whole shit to the ground. Young boy ran us off the corner? I'm losing my motherfucking mind, man. Once this man said he had grenades and shit, I was done. Stringer just couldn't get out of his own way. And for you to go to Bunny Colvin and give your man up? Must have done something to you. It's just business. You either ride or die with Avon or you part ways, bro. But you don't conspire to put your man back in a fucking cage.
But anyway, y'all, big rich in this bitch, just having fun with it. I know I missed tons of snitches on this show. Like I said, I will be making another video about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this shit. Get up in the comment section. Let me know what you think. And if you enjoyed this, check out some of the other work, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see y'all next time.